So I'm going to start off here with just a general overview of some of the different things you can log with weights and biases. Lavanya made this great report. I can share a link to it afterwards that just goes over each one and what you can do. Um, I'll start with the images. So you can log an image out of your model. It's very simple. One call to weights and biases. You log, you have a key to name it, and then you can log an image or as many as you want. Um, and it'll show up in our UI. You can do the same thing here with videos, very similar in API. It shows up here as well. You can play and watch that video. Again, you can repeat that with audio. I don't know if this will come through the speakers for you guys, but there's a little sound. Um, all very similar looking APIs, and you get the same thing where when you log this, it shows up automatically in the UI. Another one is the 3D objects. So this allows you to log any 3D object model. There's a couple different model files that are supported. Um, OGBay, OBJ, GLTF, GLB, a few others in our documentation as well. We have some specialized 3D point clouds, which is similar to the 3D objects, but allows you to log them more natively. So you can do this in NP arrays, which is you know, much more similar to tensors. See, making sure your guys' questions are getting answered. Um, another one is HTML. This is really cool because if anyone's used HTML, you can put whatever you want here. You can put a little JavaScript script. You can render things customly. Um, we've had some people could do some really cool stuff with this, Lavanya included. So now I'm giving you a quick overview. We're going to dive into some project people have done and some kind of more in-depth examples of these media types and how you can use them to help with your machine learning. I'm going to start off with my personal favorite project here, which is um, one of my coworkers, Gan. So he trained this on a small set of cat images that he scraped on the internet and used those to train a GAN. And so you can see this media panel here we have when you log images to weights and biases, you can render them in different ways. So you can lay them out in ways that are really useful here. So for example, this one on our X axis, we have many images. So in your training run, if you log a set of 10 images, it'll tile them across. And then for each row, you can see it tells you the step number. So as this goes down, We'll scroll through and we'll see our model training over time. And each one of these is going to be some point in the latent space being generated by our GAN. So we can see how many different points in this latent space evolve over time and see the quality of our model. As you can see, we start to get more and more kind of realistic images going here. We can see it struggles a little bit with certain spots. Maybe some places are a little darker. Uh, at some point, the GAN starts to pick up a lot of white maybe has a bit of trouble with that, but then restabilizes here and starts getting some textures. Um, at the end, we get some really interesting results here and it actually starts to look a lot like cats. So one of the things I've really tried to do with this is, normally when you're doing machine learning in the past, you'd have to set up whatever visualization you want beforehand. And so that would involve deciding how many cats do I wanna see? How do I wanna tile it? Do I wanna stop at each step? Um, and so now what you can do is you can just log the images the way it biases, and then afterwards you can go and you can configure it and you can set things up how you want. So instead of having to kind of decide how to analyze your results before you run your experiment, you can run your experiment, log your results, and then perform analysis on them. Um, here's another example, this panel here. I'll go ahead and full screen it for you so we can see it separate. Um, this is just many cats all rendered at the very end of training. So instead of looking at a grid and kind of seeing things over time, we just want the best results here. We can also jump into our little step slider here, scroll back in time, go to the beginning of training, and jump around and see how these things change. Next, we have another 2D grid version here. So this one is gonna be similar to our first diagram, but it's laid out now left to right. So starting on the left is gonna be 0 0.0 in time, or the zero time step and the end is gonna be our final step. And then going down in this column is a, another point in the latent space. So you can see we have many runs here. This one's about 20. And there's a nice time scale on the bottom here. And what this allows us to do is dive into and zoom into different parts of our training run. So I'm gonna look at an example and see maybe there's somewhere I wanna zoom into this model. Looks like something really interesting is happening in the, the beginning here where there's some sort of fragmenting it looks like maybe the convolutional layers are starting to learn patterns and edges uh, you can see in the second frame it starts to get a little more complicated less lines more shapes right around here we get um, some really interesting shapes coming out so let's go ahead and select that portion on the timeline 
and the panel now zooms in. So now the far left here is going to be our point about five on our training step and about a hundred and we get a much more condensed view of it. And I can see this is kind of right around here is where I was wanting to see what's going on. I go in um, even a little smaller here and really zoom in and seeing what's happening in those steps. And I can keep doing this and keep doing this and diving. And so you can see this can be really useful on a run where you have, you know, for say training a big GAN, you have maybe a million steps and you want to pull into some of these. Um, down here, this shows how you can use this same sort of image panel with the same media slider, but now you can do it instead of for many points in one latent space, you can do this for many different training runs of your model. So you'll see here for each row that we have in our panel, there's a label representing the name of the training run. And you can see right away, uh, these runs look like they didn't converge at all, didn't really learn anything, perhaps mode collapse. Um, this one here, you can see really only learns textures, although it does a little better than these ones up here. Um, and it's really cool that you can even compare these over time. So you can see, if you look at these two top ones, this one tends to learn to some sort of interesting cat really rather quickly, whereas this one, you know, it takes a lot more time to get to what is not as good as, as good of a cat. And you can, you can scroll through here and see all the different sets of your runs and get an idea of how they compare to each other. Also allows you to do the same zooming behavior. All right, I'm gonna jump ahead to the next example here, which is this one's done by Stacy, who's gonna be talking a little bit later today. Um, she's our first machine learning engineer and has made some really great reports. This one is adversarial policies in multi-agent settings. I'm not gonna go into a lot of the research that was done here, but I will kind of go through some examples and show how she's able to visualize um, her results with this. So this example here, what she did was log videos from her training runs because she's doing reinforcement learning. Um, and so you'll see there's two adversarial agents here and they're both competing against each other here. And the general idea of the paper that she was working through here is um, if you train an agent to act against another agent, they kind of both have similar behaviors and they'll, they'll fight against each other. You can see this happening in the top left, they kind of cooperate. In the bottom right, the red one is trained to do something strange, essentially to fool the blue um, agent here. And so the blue one just kind of gets confused and walks past him and stumbles and the red one just stands still and ends up winning. Um, See, there's some more examples down here involving soccer balls. So videos is another type of thing you can log. You can do the same setup you can do with images here where you can compare multiple things in a single run or multiple things across a set of runs. Um, a recent one that I've released now is 1B Molecule. So this is, allows you to visualize any sort of molecular structure right in weights and biases. So this could be used for things like drug discovery, um, you can see these are the side chains here rendered as sticks and the backbone is rendered as ribbons. We have another one here, which is, this is our point cloud example. We'll dive into some similar examples that you saw now, but laid out in a grid. So this is semantic segmentation with 3D point clouds. And you'll see we can compare, this is many runs, and we wanna compare a set of two things. So the first one here is gonna be our prediction, and then the second one is our ground truth. And so the each pair in two sets, going from left to right and then down, is a pair of these different things laid out. And again, we can take our slider, and we can step back in time, and now we can see our model's gonna do much worse earlier on the training run. As we compare this, this, this is a really simple example here in the top right where you can see how it's really struggling. It's a quite simple object to segment into two different parts, but it, it really just at the very beginning of training only paints it one color. And when we go towards the end here, we'll go back and we'll see it learns to segment this into two different discrete shapes. Um, I've, I've laid this one out as well and kind of similar setups. 
I won't talk through the details of each one. It's very similar to how I did the images, just many different ways to look at your training grounds and compare the results. This is a, a report I'm going to walk through that uses some of the 1D molecule stuff, some of the 3D objects, and some of the images. It was made by Jonathan King. He's a researcher in the COES group based out of Philadelphia. Um, so he's trying to learn the structure of proteins, so the 3D structure of protein from um, just the molecular data, which would be the amino acid sequences. And he uses text processing and then translate that to a 3D structure. Here's some examples here where the red is gonna be the ground truth and the blue is the learned model. So you can see it's, for some examples it's closer, for some examples it's farther away. The idea is to get these two shapes matching. Here's some images that show some more complicated shapes. And the differences between them. And again, at the bottom, we have some similar ones as well. So you can see the red one here struggles to learn kind of the larger structure, but often does very well with the spirals and the local structure. So something he's working on right now is trying to solve that issue. So getting these things to coil up in sort of more extended relationships that happen across the whole structure you can see it's learning very well the smaller different loops that often match very similarly, even though the whole thing doesn't fold. Um, here's something that we released rather recently as well. This one I think highlights really well the idea of how you can lock something with weights and biases and then do your experimentation afterwards or your, sorry, your analysis afterwards. So for this, you're trying to segment an image. And so you log an image and you log an image mask. And then what you can do after you've logged these, normally you have to log this as sort of a static thing where you lay your image, your mask over an image, and then you see result. Now, what you can do with weights and biases is toggle off different parts of this. You can see all of the classes you've logged. You can change the opacity of an entire layer. You can hide an entire layer. It goes up like that. I can sort of customize my visualization after I'm done with training. I can change the layout of these. So this one, I'm gonna shift it. So now the masks are shown to the side of my image. I can go ahead and put that image back in underneath there if I want. There's all sorts of ways to tweak this around. Um, and the final thing I'm gonna do here is show you just how simple it is to get these different layouts. So if you log your set of images, we'll go back to the CAT can here. You've got your advanced settings panel over here, and this allows you to choose how you want to tile things. So I'm going to tile now or step. So you can see this starts at step zero, goes all the way to step 346. I can change that to be an index. So this will do many cats at the end of the run and allow me to scrub across time. Or I can do it multiple comparing one example for each run. And then there's this additional toggle here, which allows us to get the really advanced layouts, which is grid mode. And so this allows you to do two different axes. So there's the X axis and the Y axis. In this example, our X axis is the log step. And if you have the log step, that's what gives you this really nice slider here. So you can zoom into different parts in time. And then our X axis is run. I do the same thing here where I can change this to a different setting. Now I've got that other layout we were seeing showing many examples over time. All right, so this is um, the media panel, which is really what I've been working on and trying to make it easier to see, peer into what you're doing with your model and figure out what's going wrong. That was amazing, Nick. Uh, so many cool features packed into 10 minutes or like 15, crushed it. Um, so Sayak had a question. Um, what segmentation framework was used to create those segmentation maps. Boris, it says it's amazing. That's, that's all through rates and biases. So if you log the results of your model, if you log the images that go in as the input to us, and then if you log um, 
the the data as a num you just log it as a numpy array. So right when it comes out of your model, it's probably a PyTorch tensor or a TensorFlow tensor. You can convert it to a numpy array and then pass in those values. So each, it will be a 2D array where each point is a class label index or class label integer. So one for car, two for tree, et cetera, et cetera. I think the question, uh, Nick, was maybe about which, um, like what was being, what model was being used to do the segmentation. Okay, that was YOLO, I think YOLO v3. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Psycho also asks, is there a notebook uh, that you could use to generate these? Uh, we'll share the docs and the report in the chat in just a second. Um, yeah. Do people have other questions? Let me check YouTube. Nope. People don't have other questions. Nice. Uh, thank you, Nick. I'm going to be using this talk as a demo and like sending it out to everyone I know because like I get so many questions about how to do specific things at the media panel. So I'm really excited. And thank right. you. Right. Happy to share. Talk.